how would you counsel someone if they came to you and they say, I'm falling into the sin of looking at pornography on the internet. How would you help them to discern whether they're lost and they're a slave to sin, or whether they're a true Christian who is fallen into sin, uh, they're saved, but they're just struggling with this sin, it's a besetting sin, and this is maybe a, even a young person a person who's had a recent profession in the Lord and you're trying to help them discern whether they're saved or lost. In your question, I think, is, de is definitive. Uh, and that is, <clears throat> are, uh, are they living it, in it or have they fallen into it? You know, I mean, yeah, a Christian, he falls into sin, but he does not live in it. And in the case of a new convert, why, you know, you, you've got to cut some more slack, admittedly. And... Uh, but the big question is, is, is he fighting it? Is he hating it? Is he, is he concerned about it? And uh, if that's the case, he's a new Christian and, he, and he, he sees it is sin, he realizes he's doing that, he's open, he wants to be free of it, well then, you know, you remind him of the glorious gospel. You remind him of what he has in Christ, and that's the burden of Romans chapter 6. You know, how shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? You just remind him that it's impossibility. If you're truly born again, you've got a new nature. You're no longer in old Adam. You're in, this, you're in Christ. Your old sinful self is gone. You're a new man in Christ. And now, now uh, you know, Romans 6, it exhorts us to be who we are. It exhorts us to uh, uh, knowing these things, and we lay aside the old man and put on the new man and, and just realize that to entertain sin is hypocritical. It doesn't fit us. It doesn't work for us anymore. It's never going to satisfy. And so uh, um, uh, acknowledging those things in Romans chapter 6, becoming who we are. Another thing is, it's like in Romans chapter 8, if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, you'll live. If ye through the Spirit. And so, you know, we can't do it on our own and just plow yourself into God. Be filled with the Spirit. You know, when the tide is high, you don't get caught on the rocks. And so, you know, be filled with the Spirit, walk with God, saturate yourself with the Lord, and, uh, and just uh, throw yourself into His work and His business, advancing your kingdom, and uh, these things indirectly then will fall off. A lot of the way of victory over sin is indirect. It's indirect. You don't address it directly so much, but you just are, over, are taken up with the things of God and with His glory. If you, through the Spirit, do mortify... Sometimes, you know, it, it does, though, address, a sin, uh, address us that way. You know, Peter says, lay it aside, put it off. These are New Testament terms. And so you do have to get rough, and <laughs> get ugly, get mean, get desperate. You know, I think a lot of times uh, failure to have victory over sin is just really a lack of desperation, a lack of sincerity. I mean, here's my father. He was not regenerate. He was not a Christian at all, never claimed to be. And, and over the years, many times he tried to uh, quit the cigarettes. And he, you know, he'd quit them for a while, and then, he, and then he'd smoke again. And finally, when he was 70, he saw his grandson, my son, uh, who was about age five, sitting at the kitchen table, picking up a toothpick, imitating his grandfather smoking a cigarette. When my grandfather saw that, he said, I, he thought to himself, I am not going to be that kind of an, an example to my grandson. I don't want to see him smoke. And just like that, my dad quit smoking. He was, he was not even born again. And so, you know, it's kind of pitiful for, for, uh, for somebody who claims to be a Christian to keep on dabbling like that. He's just not desperate enough.